Hi everyone, I'm Robert Joseph and today I'm going to teach you how to make this low rider bikini. So um, the difference between this and the thong is that it has a full rear and I will show you that in just a sec. So I first want to uh, give a shout out to my friend Robski, Robski Art. Um, that's his IG account. He's the designer behind this fabric, and this is an ode to the Thick Boys. That's what it says right here, T-H-I-C-C. -C. This is one of his many fabric designs that he sells on Spoonflower, and I should be scrolling his Spoonflower URL uh, down below. Um, you can buy any of his really fun prints there. You can also file, uh, follow him on his Instagram account at Art. Um, so a little bit about the pattern itself. So I've been asked a lot for stringy style bikinis. Um, and so what I designed is this pouch that, listen, you're going to pack a lot in here. Um, and I've got a much th thinner um, strap here on the side. So it goes a little bit skinnier here in the front. And this is actually something that is going to lift you. You're going to be packed in there and lift you up and out a little bit. But be aware that this does lo ride low in the front here at the center. So just be aware. And these straps kind of come up over the hip and then to the back. Now, with this pattern, I originally designed it for um, someone who has a fuller rear. I've also been getting a lot of those requests, so I decided to put those requests into, those two requests into one design. So you can see I have a lot of extra fabric here, and that's because my mannequin here does not really have a full plump rear end. So, um, and I will show you the pattern in just a second. So that's um, why there's a lot of this fabric. But here, this is a great view of this print. So you can see a lot of these guys here posing, and it's a really fun print. Um, and this would actually make a great print for the square cut as well. Um, so notice here I have a seam going here down the center back, and that's how I have created this fuller rear um, that some of you have been requesting. So um, just for a uh, visual effect, so um, the view A will have a center back seam, um, and I don't mention it during the tutorial because I decided during the tutorial that I wanted to have um, an offering for those of us who are not as well equipped in the rear end. So I have a view B, which does not have a center back seam, rather you're going to cut this one on the fold, the fold of the fabric, um, which creates a more snug fit in the rear. But those of you who need that fuller coverage, use the view A. So now, um, the other thing is, is because, let me turn this back around. So um, the pouch here, while it actually has um, a lot of room for you, it does kind of pack you in. If you have a really stretchy swimwear, or if you're going to make this out of a jersey knit, something that is super stretchy will definitely work out for the regular size. Um, but I do want to mention about the pouch, if you need more room in the pouch, um, you can go up a size, um, and likewise, if you don't need as much room, you can go down a size, um, because the seams, the matching seams for the uh, back um, don't change in widths or heights. So all of those will match. You wouldn't have to change those. The only thing that you would need to change is perhaps if you're needing a extra large pouch, but you need the medium size waist, take here at the skinny part and fold it over or cut and just put this back together um, matching um, that and you won't have to worry about matching those sides. So I don't really go into that a lot, um, but I just want to mention that. Um, the other thing about the video that I want to mention is, um, actually I do kind of mention this in the end of the video, is that um, you can see how strappy and narrow this strap is here. I didn't really intend it to be that tiny, um, but because of the style of fabric, even though this fabric is a stretchy, it stretches in four ways, um, because I chose to fully line this one, and I went ahead and fully lined it and I enclosed all of the seams, which really wasn't necessary for this pattern because the seams are so short. Um, but I went ahead and did that because I wanted to teach you how to do that. So if you're doing another suit and you want to enclose all of the seams, you can follow that method to do that. Um, but because I put a full lining in the front all the way across here and a full lining in the back, um, I didn't get as much stretch to actually match the elastics. So what I did here 
is I have this and I'll, and I'll shoot a, a close up of this so I'll just kind of split screen this so you can see it a little bit um, uh, closer up is that it was really meant for the pattern itself is really meant for the elastic to fold in and to just meet each other um, here in the center so I know that um, if you're looking at the camera this way you won't really be able to see that but I'll split screen it um, to show um, a closer view of this and this suit I did not line at all which is completely acceptable. Um, you just want to make sure that you're definitely using a double needle overlock stitch um, and also um, tighten up your stitch length a little bit and um, so that nothing stretches out here. So it looks fine on the inside. Um, there's nothing to it. This is the one that does not have the seam in the back. Um, so, and I was able to match all of those. Okay, so uh, that is an option although in the video I fully line this but of course if you don't want to line it you don't have to um, so I know I've talked a lot in this intro um, I just want to say again this is the low rider bikini it's number 11 you can get this on my Shopify site I will put the direct link down below in the description I will also put direct links to Rob Rob's uh, spoon flower account down there and also his IG account and actually uh, that's all I really have to say for now we will get right into the tutorial right after the intro Okay, so before I begin um, cutting out the fabric, uh, there's just some pattern information I want to talk to you about. So um, there are just two pattern pieces, the front pouch and the back, and I'm going to be fully lining this, meaning I'm going to line the front and the back, and I'm probably going to enclose the seams. And I think I'll enclose all of the seams, so I'll show you how to do that, including the uh, inseam or crotch seam here. I'll go ahead and enclose that, enclose that so you can see how I do that. So um, you do not have to line this if you don't want to. Um, just be aware of that that will make a very kind of thin suit. Um, but this suit is really not meant for, um, this design really isn't meant for swimming in. It's really more of a posing suit or a lounging suit. Um, you will notice that this is the back piece. And I'll just turn this around so you can see it a little bit better. So on the back, um, there is a seam here. You see it's kind of arched and um, I've been getting a lot of requests for fuller rear ends, um, fuller rears um, on some of the swimsuits. So um, most of my swimsuits just have a straight line for the back, but here I've added a little bit of a bump out um, to accommodate a fuller rear end along with the curve here that cups um, your buttocks as well. So if you have a fuller rear, um, this pattern will actually give you a little bit more room and a little bit more coverage. So if you have a flatter rear, this, this may not be the pattern for you, but I just want you to be aware of that. There is a center back seam here. Um, now this is called the low rider because the front rides actually very low um, as well as the back. So it scoops down a little bit in the back and it rides pretty low in the front. So just be aware of that. So I've added a little bit of a fuller pouch here um, uh, for those of you who need a little bit more room in the front. Also it being a little lower, everything is kind of, shall I say, smushed together, I guess. But I do want you to be aware that the side seam, or this is actually, I've moved this around toward the back a little bit. This seam here will match up to this seam over here on the back. And these are all the same length. So this between sizes will not change. So if you need more room in the front, say you might be a medium 
waist size, but say you're an extra large in the front area or you just need more room, you could use the extra large front here and then slash the center here of the waist area and just take away um, and match it up to the medium length and keep the larger size here because all you won't have to change the height of this at all. So um, I'm not going to actually show you how to do that right now. Um, I am working on some alterations videos um, to be released a little bit later in the summer. So also I want to point out that these are the elastic amounts that you're going to be needing. Um, so don't throw this part away. I would cut this out and then tape it with the patterns that you cut out because we will be using this later in um, the tutorial, okay? So there are just a couple of seams here. We've got our side seam here and we've got our crotch seam here. So a quarter inch seam allowance is there as well on the center back and on this center front seam area as well. So I just want to talk about elastics. So I'm using 3 8 inch wide elastic around the waist and in the leg opening area. Okay, so this is not really meant for uh, a drawstring in the waist. So if you're worried about things slipping down when you're out and about, then I would make this measurement your waist elastic a little bit smaller, but you may need to test that out. Um, I'm going to be making the medium today, so I'm going to be cutting 32 inches, which would make the, the finished waist elastic 31. And you do want this, this suit to be um, fairly snug. Um, all of the measurements here and the patterns are much smaller than your actual body measurements. Now, the elastic I'm using today is this uh, gray colored rubber elastic. I actually ran out of the cotton wrapped uh, swimsuit elastic. If you go buy this at a fabric store, it will actually say swimwear elastic. It is 3 8 inch wide and it is cotton um, well, rather, it's rubber wrapped in cotton, which holds up, gives it a little bit more holding power for um, swimming, swimsuits. However, the rubber here is actually the same thing, um, and this is what is commercially used in most swimsuits. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using. I ran out of this other swimsuit uh, elastic, so um, I'll be using the rubber, which I have tons of. Okay, um, one more thing is... Um, I am going to be using this fabric, which is designed by Robski Art. This is a very special suit, so um, we're going to be doing a, a live uh, Q&A um, later on, and I thought I would use this fabric to make this suit out of. So uh, being that this is for a fuller rear end, and this uh, design is for the thick boys. So um, I'm really excited to get to use this fabric. He has a shop on Spoonflower and all of his information is down below in the description and I'll try to scroll it along the bottom um, um, during the video as well. He has a lot of really neat and fun um, prints. So again, you can check out his shop at Robski Art on Spoonflower. So this is a swimwear fabric. It's their active wear fabric and it's actually really, really nice. It's actually fairly medium weight. Um, so um, you feel really comfortable in this. It has a terrific stretchability to it. So um, without me talking any more about the pattern and stuff, I will get to cutting out the fabric. Um, and then after that, we will get into the tutorial.
Okay, so uh, we're ready to get ready to sew. So I'm gonna move the elastics over to the side and I don't need this anymore um, and set the pattern on the side. Now, um, so one note, I will be using white thread to sew all of the seams, but once we get to the elastic, I'm gonna switch to black because it, um, it looks better with this particular coloring of the fabric. So the reason I'm using white for the seams is because I don't want the black thread to show, show through um, the lining. So that's, that's why. So the first thing we need to do is we need to match our right sides or face sides. You will hear me say face side probably more than right sides. So the face side is the uh, printed side of the fabric. So I need to make sure that those are going to be together to sew that seam. And I'll just lay this quickly. I have to lean over my table a little bit to get that. So we're gonna sew this front center seam first. And I'm gonna actually sew the lining and the center front all together in one. Um, so I know my lining is already face sides together because um, I don't like to have to touch it any more than I am and this is a little off um, because this lining uh, stretches a lot so I want to put the lining on the bottom wherever the feed dogs are so I'm gonna I want to sew from the bottom um, or the inseam all the way up to the waist so I need to flip this over this way And then, because I want to sew everything together, and you don't have to, you can sew them separately and then put them together. Um, and that's what I'm going to be doing with the back. So if you want to see how to do that, I'll be doing that in a minute. But these ones I'm going to sew all together. So I'm first going to make sure that I can get my front, my center fronts all lined up. Try not to stretch the fabric as you work with it. You don't want to get it stretched out. So the center front line is the most important. And once you get it pinned together, of course, if something shifts, you can uh, work with it at the machine. And sometimes you'll see me unpin stuff and then kind of reposition. And I just kind of pat sometimes to get it to move into place. Okay, I'm gonna put some pins, and I'm gonna put these pins far away, about an inch or so away, and that way, um, I won't have to remove very many of them except for when I come around this curve. And I don't know if you've watched several of my videos or not, but a lot of times when I go around this curve, I do short little bursts of sewing. And that's so I can stop and kind of lift the presser foot sometimes and kind of reposition that curve. So sometimes if you try to do this curve all the way in one, um, you will stretch it out. We don't want that to happen. So today I'm gonna to be using my industrial machines. However, if you have home machines, the process is exactly the same. Um, so this is a special fabric and a special suit that might possibly be given away. I'm not going to uh, say that for certain, but we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna be using my industrial machines, um, which uh, just have a little bit better um, consistency than my home uh, serger. So I'm gonna be using a double needle overlock, um, all four threads um, for this center front seam. So I'm gonna put this out over here for just a minute because now I'm gonna work with the back and again, the same thing, um, match your face sides together. Now we're not gonna sew the center back seam with the lining. We're gonna keep these separate. So I told you before that I'm gonna show you how to enclose all of the seams. Of course, you don't have to do that. Um, you can just sew there's your seams as regular, um, but um, I like to enclose my seams. So I'm just going to get some pins here, um, and be careful when you're putting the pins in, you don't want to um, poke a hole in it. Um, this should stretch is pretty good, so nicking that won't be an issue really. Okay, so that one's pinned. My linings are already face side together. I like to match my lining face sides together before I cut. Let's see if I can get this lined up a little better. Sometimes you pat it in the direction you want it to go. It 
helps. Um, and hopefully it doesn't stretch. So that means we're going to be sewing the center back seam on the fashion fabric. I'll say fashion fabric or, or printed fabric. Um, and the center back seam on the lining separately. Um, and then we'll just be doing a small stitch line later on um, just to tack them together um, somewhere here in the center. And that's after we've enclosed the seams, okay? So I'm gonna do that all um, in one go. So you'll see all of that in the, um, in the next part of the video in the overlock. I'll be stitching the uh, center front pouch along this center line, and then I'll be stitching the center back seams on the back um, printed fabric and on the back lining. And then once I'm done with that, I'll be right back here at the table. Okay, so we have the center front seam and the center back seams done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna turn the front pouch to the face side and we can kind of see how that looks. And I'll also make sure that your lining here is turned out so that we see the lining on the inside. Okay. So we've got our self fabric out here, and then we've got our lining fabric. So this is very pouchy, so it's gonna wanna stick out like that. So now what I'm actually gonna do is probably just put a couple pins in where the lining is. Now if you are not lining yours, you won't have to worry about it. If you're not lining it, of course, you won't be able to um, enclose your seams, so all your seams will be exposed if you're not lining it. You could just line the front pouch and cut the lining off somewhere right about here if you wanted to do that as well. Okay, I just want to keep these together because the linings, the lining and the self fabric will need to be together. Um, that edge here for when we do the elastics. And I made this strap here really pretty thin, stringy. I know I've been getting a lot of requests for a lot of stringy type bikinis. Um, I don't do more of them because it's hard for the home sewing machines to do that small um, of elastic with uh, the home machine. So anyway, okay, so moving on. So we've got that um, kind of pinned like this and what I'm going to do with the back and let's just go ahead and open this and see what this looks like so you can see that pattern it gives you you can see it's a little bit puckery here so that gives extra room for your buttocks um, to fit in there so um, that's why we have a center back seam is for more room okay so now that I've got this I can see the face side I'm gonna turn this over so that it's going, the, the face side, the printed side, is going to match the printed side of the pouch. And now these seams, it will match to these seams and make sure that your linings on the front are matched up because you're going to match that seam to the back. And there will be some hangover here, a little bit up here, more so down here, because this is the seam allowance. And so where their corners meet, that's actually the width of the seam allowance. So let's see, this is giving me a little bit of trouble here. This is such a short seam and I can realign these once I'm over in the machine, you'll probably see me do that. I don't wanna spend so much time here in the video trying to line everything up, but just make sure that you've got everything lined up. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Make sure that all of my edges are lined up. We're matching all our face sides or right sides together. 
I'm just gonna put a pin in that even though it's gonna be going the other way so we can fiddle with this once we're at the machine. All right. So then, once we've got that pinned, we're gonna take the whole thing and we're going to flip it over. Okay, just make sure you have everything pinned here. And everything is laying, laying flat here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my lining, I'm gonna find the face side or the right side of my lining. Obviously it's the side without the seam. And we're gonna match the face side of the lining to the garment, we're gonna flip it over so face sides are matching here. And we're going to line that up here on each of these seams and I can take that pin out that I had holding everything together under here and I can repin this. Okay, and again, we can kind of fiddle with this uh, once we get over to the machine to realign everything. So this again, grab this pin under here. This is to enclose the seams. Now, if you don't want to enclose the seams, you can just uh, match all the seams up together. But I think this makes it uh, really nice. Of course, we're going to be folding our elastic over, so you really wouldn't see that seam anyway. But I wanted to show you, um, for those of you who want to make everything enclosed and look really nice. So we're going to go and sew these seams. Um, if you Okay, let me just step up, step back up for just a second. If you don't want to enclose the seams, this is going to go the wrong side. You will match the wrong side to the suit. So match this wrong side to the back wrong side and then just sew these seams. Okay, um, and now we can just go ahead and sew the side seams here. This one's going to be enclosed. Okay, so we have those two sides uh, pinned. Let's go ahead and uh, flip this to the right side so we can have a look and see what this looks like. Okay, just very gently. So now this is the face side, right? Okay, so if we look at the inside, our inside is completely enclosed. And here is, oh, here is the other side. Okay, so I'm actually gonna keep this uh, inside out because what we're going to need to do, let me bring this out to the front. So now we can actually sew the crotch seam or the bottom of the pouch seam. And what we're going to do is we're going to match both of these, this front, to the back, but only to the printed or the fashion fabric, only to the printed side. So I'm going to line that up on the center. So I'm leaving the lining on the table and I'm just going to line this up and get it pinned. I'm going to pin it this way because we're going to be needing to unpin it. So those look pretty well. My lining stretched out a little bit and that's okay. So this lining is called Halenka and it stretches a lot, which is good. And pin this here. Okay, so that is pinned together. Now what we need to do is we need to bring this over to this side. So what I'm going to do, let me turn this to the side. Okay, so I've got the front, I've got the lining, the front pouch lining, the front pouch body, and then the body of the back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift under here and I'm going to grab onto this lining and just pull it underneath. Try not to stretch it. Pull underneath so we see the right side of the lining here. Try not to get it twisted in here um, because you don't want to have to rip out your stitching. So now what you're going to do, I've got the right side of my lining and I see the right side of my lining on the pouch. So I'm going to match those two together. And then I'll match up the center seam. See, I'm glad I put these pins like this. I'm just going to take that out and repin it 
and you just want to make sure that all of your edges are together because you want to get all four of those layers sewn together. Of course, I'll have to repin this. It's such a short seam. Okay, so all four layers are pinned together. So I have the, uh, now I'm seeing the wrong side of the back lining pinned to the right side. Okay, so it's all in there like that. And then I have the body fabric on this side. So let's go sew this crotch seam together. Okay, so we've got the seam, the seam done now. I'm gonna carefully turn everything right side out. We can first have a uh, look at the inside. So here's our crotch seam or the bottom of the pouch and that's completely enclosed. And our front seam is enclosed. Let me, our side seams are enclosed. But the one thing that, uh, it's also enclosed the center back here, but it is free, okay? So we don't want that to happen. So all we need to do, let me kind of get everything lined up. I'm gonna put a pin here at the top of the waistband here. So I don't want that to move around. And then I'm going to just carefully pull this. I'm gonna feel like which way is the seam allowance going. So what I wanna do in here is kind of fold this back. And I wanna find these, the seam. How am I gonna do this so you can see this? I don't wanna be stretching a whole lot. So this is the center back seam of the lining. What you wanna do is reach in here and kind of match up those seams and grab those seams, the center back seams. Try to make them, you know, even from the bottom. You may have, sorry, that was a little closer off the camera. Um, because you don't want to sew, you don't want to sew them all the way. So what you want to do is around the curved area in the center of the height. So I'm going to start around that. You see this curved area here? So match those areas right about the center. And I'm going to put a pin to pin them all together, the two layers. And then what I will do is I'm going to sew these together with the straight stitch machine right in the overlocking seam allowance, maybe right on top of that second needle. And you can use a longer stitch if you want, um, just between in this area, probably no further than that. You could even do less than that. We just want to make sure that the lining doesn't move around when we're, when we're wearing it. Okay. So I'm going to do that in a straight stitch. I'm just going to stitch right here in the seam allowance. Try not to catch the actual, um, body of the lining or the body of the fabric. Okay, so I have um, stitched the lining and the, the main body um, seam allowance together. So I'm gonna flip this uh, right side out again. If we can see what that looks like now. Okay, well, there's the front. So here's the back. All right, and I did put a pin up here. Let me turn this uh, inside out really quick. 
So now what I'm talking about is that now your lining will not move around freely or get stuck in places that you don't want it to be stuck in. Um, so that is that. And now we need to start working with the uh, waist elastic and the leg elastic. However, because this is such a long area, especially around here in the uh, leg opening here, um, and I don't want the lining to move around while I'm trying to attach the lining. One of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a basting stitch right here along the edge. So if I can get this laid out so you can see this. All right. So I'm matching my linings up to the edge and I'm probably going to run a basting stitch about a quarter inch in from the edge. And I'm gonna be using a long stitch. Now this stitch can be removed um, if you can see it after you're overlocking or you can kind of go through and um, unpick or just pick a couple of stitches and that will release the tension on the straight stitch. So I don't want this um, lining to move around when I'm trying to attach the, the elastic. So that's why I'm doing it and it's just to hold it in. So just be careful that you're not stretching this the suit and any areas where there it may have stretched out or aren't quite um, matching or is the camera um, you can just kind of trim that off but make sure that it still stretches evenly across all right so I'm gonna do that in the uh, straight stitch machine and I'm which side am I gonna do that I could probably do it on the uh, face side so the lining is toward the feed dog so that my print doesn't get scratched up, which it shouldn't, but you know, depending on how sharp your feed dogs are. And that way, if the lining, because this lining is really stretchy, um, the feed dogs will help keep, um, help keep it from stretching out too much, okay? So you'll see me do that, and I'm, that's just going to be really quick. Okay, so um, I'm getting ready to work with the elastics and I have the two leg opening elastics um, here ready to go. Um, but before I do that, I wanna kinda clean up some of this area here in the crotch where it's kind of uneven. And if yours comes out like this, it's not a big deal. Um, we can just kinda clean that up. So I'm just going to kinda even everything out, kinda lay it flat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim off this little bit here I'll just use my rotary blade right into that area there. And so we just kind of cleaned that up a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing. Be careful that you're not cutting any other part of the suit. And I just want to go right in here to the back area where it's kind of a curved shape. So we curve right there. Okay. And uh, that just keeps it a little bit even and as far as our eye line when we're doing the uh, elastic. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna set the suit down here a little bit and then I'm gonna bring in one of the elastics here. So um, we're gonna actually create a ring and if you watch some of my other videos, I'm doing exactly the same way. So I'm gonna fold this over and overlap about a half inch. So I'm going to mark on each of the ends, a half inch. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use a marking pen because this won't be seen. And I'm just gonna do a half inch. You could do more, you could do an inch if you want to. Um, whoops. Um, it won't really take away too much of the elastic. Um, so <clears throat> there are the marks. Now that was a marking pen, so I don't want to smudge it. So when you um, put these together, you're going to lap 
those marks on top of each other like this and then sew straight down and then you could also go back and forth this way uh, with a zigzag uh, just be careful that you're not getting it kind of scrunched up but because I'm using this uh, rubber I'm just gonna stitch here um, because it, the needle will actually eat this and I just need it to stay together while I'm working with it on the suit okay so I'm just gonna go do that really quick and I'll be right back to both of them make sure you do both rings and then also just keep an eye just to double check that you don't have it twisted okay so I'm gonna go sew that right now Okay, so I've got my rings, my elastic rings sewn together, and there are no twisties in them. So let's bring this suit back in. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide the elastic rings into fourths, and then we're going to divide the leg openings into fourths. So the easiest way to do that is on where you sewed, fold this in half, and on the opposite side and I'm going to mark this end with a pen. Let me get the cap off here. Okay, then I'm going to match that mark back to the seam, the part that I had sewed. So they're matched and on either end, go ahead and either pin or mark also. So one there, and you can also do this with chalk, but this is rubber elastic and very few things actually write on it. I just have to be careful that those don't uh, smear off. Okay, so now I have my four marks that have been turned this into four equal parts. I'll do the other one later. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to divide the leg opening into fourths. And I'm going to use the crotch seam here as one of the marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin there, even though we could just use the seam, but I want you to see that. So I'm gonna fold this and very gently, so this is curved, so there's this concave um, and convex curve that we're gonna be folding to. So you don't wanna stretch this, but you wanna be really careful just to match the edges it does make a little bit of difference if you don't match the edges. So just very carefully walk it all the way. You're folding it in half, basically. And then once you get up here to the end of the folded area, that's where you're going to put a pin. And then match this pin back to the first pin that we did. This is just like the elastic. And again, you're going to be very careful and walk the edges along each other. When you do, when you get good, I mean, I'm doing this really slow so you can see it along the edges. And once you get to the folded edge, put a pin there. Then I got to go back to this, my two pins that I matched up, and walk the other side. And there's my fold there, and I'll put a pin there. <clears throat> okay, so now let me fold this out again so we can see it. Okay, so we have a pin here down at the crotch, and then a pin up here the just below the mid buttocks and then one here just past the side seam and then one here right in the front and now we're going to match all of the marks to each of those pins now you want to be careful where you put the uh, seam on the elastic because that will show a little bit of bulk 
and I normally do it here around the side seam. This is now this wraps around to the back. You don't really want to put it on the seam because that will add a lot more bulk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here, which is just on the other side of the seam. I know it seems toward the front, but this is actually wrapping around. So I'm going to match that mark to the pin. I push my pin down kind of far. And what I'm going to do, you can put your pins this way or this way. And I'm going to do it this way because it'll be easier for me to pull out. So I'm going to push this. Make sure you push it up there so when you stretch it doesn't like pull out. And then basically I'm just going to walk that elastic along. Try not to stretch the suit. And then just match each mark or pin to the pin. You don't need to stretch anything just yet. Just walk the elastic along. I'm going to take another pin to pin this in. And then continue walking. And as you're walking this, make sure that your elastic is not getting stretched. I mean, not stretched, but make sure it's not getting twisted. So there's the next mark, and I'm going to bring that up to this pin. I'm having a hard time here because the I'm leaning way over on my table. And my, my back is giving me a problem. Okay, so there's the other one, and I think we're coming up to the last mark. There it is. And then I'm going to just pin that in place. Okay, so now let's uh, lay this out here. So this is where how the elastic is now pinned in. And so when we sew, we're going to be stretching the elastic to match the size of the suit. And it's, it's okay if you stretch over the amount, that's fine. Um, just not too much over the amount of what you're trying to stretch it into. So I'm going to try to start here where my uh, seam is. Um, or I could you could start somewhere else, that's fine. But once we get going, you see this area here, we need to stretch this. And sometimes if you stretch a little bit more to stretch the suit out, then it's easier to grab these sharp curves. But just stretch a little bit extra, not a lot. Um, and that will be able to easier for you to get the edge of the fabric on um, the edge of the elastic there and that sharp curve. Because we want to keep that sharp curve because it goes down into the the back of the suit. So I'm going to go and put this in the overlock or serger um, and get this elastic sewn on. Now I like to put the elastic on the bottom where the feed dogs are. Um, that helps keep the elastic in alignment. But if you feel more comfortable putting the elastic on the top, then by all means. However you um, can actually work with the elastic in your machine, um, then do it your way. So I'm going to put this on. I'm actually going to put both of them on, but I only need to show you one way, uh, one side um, to save time in the video. So I'm running over to the overlock now. Okay, so uh, now that we have the leg opening elastics on, you can see the suit is actually coming together. We just need to apply the waist elastic, and we're going to apply it the same exact way that we did the leg openings. So it's just a larger piece. So all we need to do is lay this out, and then we're going to mark our half inch overlap, just as we did before. 
and then I'm just going to tell you because I will probably speed the other parts up um, you're going to sew this together uh, just like we did before and my pen decided not to work my other one kind of quit on me as well well I can I can see that you can't see that but probably but I did I can um, I don't know my pens decided to quit working so we're gonna sew that overlap this stitch it the same way we did and then I'm gonna come back here I'm gonna divide um, the elastic into fourths just like we did before so go back and reference right you're gonna fold it on that seam put a pin or mark here and then match that pin up and then you'll put a pin or a mark on both sides of that elastic now for the waist here um, we have a center front seam and we have a center back seam so all we need to do is match those seams up and I'm gonna put a pin there to hold everything together because if you remember from the beginning um, I told you that this waistband the front slightly wraps around to the back so uh, we just need to carefully walk the waist to each other to find that halfway point and this is actually dividing the waist into four equal parts which we will then match the elastic to just like we did the leg openings and it doesn't seem like much but it's about an inch but if you don't do this if you use the side seams you're going to have a lot more stretch in the in the uh let me see where we where we have the stretch you'll have a lot more stretch in the front and not so much in the back okay so i've separated that out okay and then once we've got that attached i will overlock it so to save time on the video um the following parts where i sew the elastic together matching everything and overlocking onto the waist will all be sped up Okay, so we have all of the elastics on and you can see how it's really coming together. Um, now before we fold over the elastic and stitch it down, um, remember those that basting stitch? So some of those stitches will show, so um, I got a little crazy when I did that. So in spots, I don't know if you can see that, in spots like that, once I turn this over, some of those stitches might be right on the edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out now. Um, and if some of them are buried in the overlock, that's fine. Um, but as long as you use that really long stitch, you should just be able to pull it right out. So I'm just gonna speed this part up. Okay, so all the basting has been um, taken out, um, so that won't give us a problem. So now all we need to do is fold over the elastic and stitch it down. So now I don't normally fold it and then pin it. I just fold it as I go along and stretch back to the original size. Um, but if you need to pin, go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to be using my industrial cover stitch and I'm going to be cover stitching with black. Everything on here has been done with white, but I'm going to go ahead and do this in black, um, which means that I'm going to, uh, with my cover stitch, um, which means I'm going to be stitching on the face side or the right side of the fabric. So if you're going to be using your zigzag stitch, test out your zigzag first and find the length and the width that works for you. 
um, and you're going to be turning this to the inside and stitching from the inside so you will see this now you can go ahead and pin this if you want to help you along the way um, I usually just kind of stretch it until it looks like it's back to its regular um, size and then stitch over it um, and I like to catch one stitch right here on the edge just going over the elastic and the other stitch right on the elastic um, that's for the zigzag um, now for the cover stitch of course we're going to be seeing this side so you'll fold it underneath and you'll be uh, seeing this you just have to be careful that all of the fabric here is flush against the elastic right we don't want any kind of bubbles um, with extra uh, weight of fabric here on the edge so um, one thing to note here about this side area here it's very narrow so um, I have lined this and even though everything is really stretchy what happens when I fold this over is they're folding over on top of each other and that is okay as long as your machine can handle it um, my machine won't, won't have a problem because it's industrial um, strength but if you find that if you're not lining it really when you fold this over you can actually match the two edges of the elastic okay but if you like to have the narrower a look then just fold over on top of each other and it should and as long as your machine is strong enough it will go through that but if you're not lining it should be match up to the uh, each each of the elastics should meet meet each other um, but because I lined this um, I don't have as much stretch in that small area so I'm gonna take this over to the cover stitch machine I'm going to turn this under and I'll go ahead and um, and I'm actually going to do the legs first so that when I turn over the waist it is going to overlap um, so that the waist will actually cover my leg elastic okay just here in this area so you want me to pin that maybe I should pin this just to get it started and where am I going to start I'm probably going to start on the back somewhere here so make sure you get those curves and fold over the elastic so it's flush against the elastic or fold over the fabric. Let me say that one more time. Fold over the elastic so the fabric is flush with the elastic. I get tongue tied sometimes. Okay, so this is about how I'm going to be doing that. Okay. So over to the cover stitch machine. And there it is, the low-rise bikini with a fuller rear. Now, um, if you didn't catch that, I may have edited it out. Um, I had a little issue with my cover stitch machine right here at the uh, end. And what happened was my thread got caught in the uh, spool holder and it broke off. So I had to go back and um, shoot that, rip this out, um, and then uh, fix, reshoot that. And then another um, thing you need to know is that it was not my intention to have the side pieces here uh, fold over and lap over on the elastic. Uh, I think it's just because I um, am using a slightly heavier fabric. This is really a medium weight 
um, swim fabric, but I have lined the entire area around this and that just took away from the stretch. So I want to advise you that the width here is approximately a one and a quarter inch. And then I have three eighths of elastic on the top and the bottom here, and that's a total of three quarters of an inch. So that means there's a half inch left over. So sometimes when you're stretching or not stretching, um, things tend to shrink up a little bit. And I think um, that's what happened here, is just the thickness of everything um, forced me to overlap the elastic. But I really intended for the elastics to fold over and actually meet each other almost exactly. So that's what you should be looking for. But if it folds over like this, it gives you a much skinnier um, side part here before you get to the back. And I know some of you have been asking for that. So it doesn't really take away from the elasticity because it stretches just fine. So I think this is great. I love this fabric. Um, again, this is Robski art. Um, this is his artwork. Go check out his Spoonflower uh, site and purchase some fabric. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and that you'll subscribe for many, many more. And as always, be well.